All right, so I see a lot of people um, painting over things uh, when they should be painting around them. And this is a, uh, it's a it's a thing that takes time, I'd say, to get a hold of like when you should paint over something or when you should be painting around it. I'm gonna do a demonstration of uh, some clouds today because I see, uh, this is probably the thing I see the most is people paint their sky and they put their their clouds over top of it. Um, but this also goes for, you know, if you paint a sky and you have like a palm tree coming up into the sky and you try and paint that palm tree, um, or mountains, you paint your sky and you have mountains, or say if you painted like a big scene of mountains and then in front of it you have more of the landscape with trees and other mountains and you try and just build over top of that, uh, it's just not, it's just gonna, you're just gonna be fighting against the paint and this also kind of goes hand in hand with uh, blocking out a painting like blocking out the main shapes of a painting so you know you know like this is the mountain this is the tree this is the sky and you kind of generally know where things are going to be and what uh you know general color and value they're going to be so you can group them together and you're not painting over everything so i'm just going to lay in a sky here real quick using a little bit of phthalo blue and uh, ultramarine blue. I'll probably speed this up in the video. Alright, so what people will do now is they'll have their sky, they'll still be wet, and then they'll try and go over it with their clouds. And they'll try and put their clouds in. Seem like it's kind of working, but you're never going to get that really good defined like white highlight with the cloud. Now I know I had a video painting, you know, about uh, fat over lean like being able to paint over top of that and that is valuable in certain situations but other situations like this one it, there's just no need no need for it and you're kind of making your you know making things di more difficult for yourself but now this uh, you know just because it's, you see it's blending in a lot you know, this is a bad thing for this big cloud, you know, here in the foreground because it's, you know, we want it to be a little sharper and crisper. But say if you had clouds in the distance, like this technique of wet and wet on top, like this would be an example where it might be better to actually paint over top of the wet paint. Like say if you had some, some clouds back here, since they're further in the background, they're going to blend in with the sky more. A little atmospheric perspective. So say if you had, you know, they got the clouds in the background here. It's kind of good that they blend in with the sky, but you know, for this cloud up here, or if you know, like any you know, cloud in the foreground, it's you know, it's still going to be a struggle to really get those nice bright highlights. I mean, if I go pretty thick with the paint, I might be able to get them. Just mixing it with that blue so much. And then you got the shadow of the cloud. Throw that in.
All right, so now I know that I could probably, if I tried, you know, and really stuck at it, I could get these highlights with some really thick paint. Um, also, just like when it dries, it'll, you know, be able to put more paint on it. But let's see if we can find an easier way to do this. All right, so if I were to paint this, if I was doing a landscape, this is what I'd do. I'd block it in first. Just going to take a little bit of my CAD red thin down a lot and I'd block in exactly where you know I wanted my cloud to be And I like to work dark to light, so I'm start with my dark first. And this process, you know, I'm doing a cloud here just because I see, you know, this happen a lot with clouds, but it, it goes for a lot of other things. So I've said before, you know, this working dark to light, it's also a good, good way to kind of go about painting a lot of things. All right, so I'm just gonna throw in darks of my clouds Now as this cloud gets further back, it's going to be a little cooler. Today's lesson's not on atmospheric perspective or painting clouds, but a little bonus information. Alright, so the next thing I'd want to do is then paint in my sky, like, you know, still working dark to light. Next thing I'd want to get is the sky, so I'm going to throw in the sky, but this time I'm going to work around the clouds. So I'm going to speed this up and I'll come back <laughs> once I'm done painting into the sky. All right, welcome back. Got a little, little sky thrown in there. So now I'm going to go and finish off the rest of these clouds. So I'm going to get a mid-tone gray here. You see, since we're not painting over the blue of the sky, it's just so much easier to get these bright, you know, highlights in the clouds. This, this whole, you know, knowing to paint around or paint over something is uh, something I struggled with for quite some time, you know, just not, you know, thinking I kind of would get one method or way of doing it in my head and I'd kind of apply it to everything. And I thought like, oh, you know, I should be able to paint over everything, you know, because I, you know, this is one painting and I was able to do it for a certain section and you know, you just kind of have to play it by ear, and there's no right answer. Like, I'm not giving a end-all, be-all way here to do it. Um, it's just a, an offering of a certain way of doing it. That's another, that's a big piece of information that, or advice that I'd give anybody starting out painting is, like, don't think, you know, there's only one way to do something. There's definitely certain principles about painting that 
aren't going to change in terms of like just the physicality of the paint and what you can do with it uh, physically, but you know, always be willing to try different things or figure out better ways of doing things for whatever it is you're trying to do. Another cool thing with this process is, you know, as I get to the edges here, I can decide whether I want them to be crisp edges or if I want, you know, like that to have like a little bit of softness to it, which is crucial for clouds and just having like a variety of edges and shapes. You don't want things too uniform, too squared off, anything like that. Perfect. See, I'm keeping a variety of brush strokes. I'm not ever getting too uniform with anything, too repetitive. It's pretty key with painting pretty much anything in nature. Also, with clouds, it's kind of just kind of turning into a cloud demo. I like to throw in a little bit of the sky color lightly because it is reflecting that sky color and the light so all these clouds are is you know was a water vapor water is definitely reflective we know that I'm also thinking about the shape of the the cloud and, and kind of giving it a some volume it's just doing it this way opposed to this way just I feel like it, just, it makes things easier and have more options now I can go pretty thick with this paint for the top tier highlights and since I'm not fighting that blue paint underneath I'm gonna lay the paint down and it's gonna be how I like it I do like putting in some of these distant clouds. These are fun.
If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also offer you this video and this video. Please choose one. They're both good.